and welcome back. Infopath 2013 release offers us very few pre-break templates unlike previous versions. This means we have to create our own. We begin by going backstage and clicking the new tab. The template we're going to use is a blank template despite the fact our end objective is to publish to a SharePoint library. You've probably noticed SharePoint list option as well. How this template is used won't be covered in this series of videos. We initiate a blank form by either double clicking or a single click then clicking design form button. It doesn't much matter which route you take. As you can see the form requires a title. Simply click the cell and type a name. Next below this you see add table. Place the cursor in the box. Next move your eyes and mouse up towards the ribbon and click insert tab. Viewing the insert ribbon options you can see tables. Click the little arrow lower right hand side to review the table formats. You'll see the two column, single column and four column. We select a column table without heading. Note removing your mouse over the various table options reveals pop-up display message providing additional information about the particular table. Select a four column table, no title. The reason we've already added a title. Cast your eye and mouse over the ribbon and click the home tab. Place your cursor on the left hand side in add control cell. Next look up at the ribbon and you will see controls. Click date picker. As you do so, the control cell now holds a date picker function. To the left you can type a label name. If you watched an earlier video in this series you may recall me saying leave the pane fields panel open. Take a look and you'll see under my fields, fields 1. Click to highlight field 1, then right click. Select properties. Under the data tab properties name you can rename the field. It's important you name the field something that best describes the field. Implementing a well constructed naming convention now helps you and anyone else you may be working with. The importance of field naming will become obvious as we add many more fields. Name the field today's date. Note capitals are used for each word. This is called camel casing. Click OK. Return to the fields panel and click my fields to highlight. I'm going to show you another way to add a control. Look down to the bottom of the panel and you will see blue underlined text stating add field. Click this. A new window opens. Name the newly created field date. Leave the default type as field element as set. In the data type drop down, select date and click OK. In the fields panel you'll see the field I've just added. Click this field and holding down the mouse button I'm able to drag the field over to the table and place the field in the middle of two column table part. Having placed the field in this position you can see two cells highlighted. When I see this I can release the mouse button. Note the label and control is set. If I needed it to I can change the label name and controls functionality won't be affected. You may have observed in earlier presentations seeing the date control in the form had been preset. Let's take a quick look at the form to remind you. I'm going to show you how to configure this. First click the date control to make this active. Right click 
and in the drop down menu select properties. In the data tab select format button. Next to the data type drop down this opens another window. Here we can choose our date format for example day, month, year, alternatively month, day, year. Make sure the option button formerly known as a radio button is set to display the date to this locale. You can probably accept the default drop down. Viewing the list below you will see some dates have an asterisk. These dates will use your computer date settings. I should point out we are creating a browser form. This means the date control will apply the browser language settings. If you wish to set a date format and override such functionality then select a date without an asterisk. Click OK. Next you'll see date type date value and an FX function button. Click the FX function button. This opens an another window. Click insert function button. This opens yet another window. From the function panel select today and then click OK. This returns you to an earlier window. Click verify formula. While this is an elementary formula it's good practice to make this a habit. Click OK and OK again. This returns us to the original window. Before we close this let's take a look at the display tab. Here we could add a placeholder title but the default is fine. In advance tab you can add a screen tip for example click date picker to change the date and then click OK. When a user hovers over the control this message will be shown as a pop-up. Next I'm going to add two text boxes one for the first name and one for the second name. Return to fields panel and click add field. Name the fields first name and leave the data type as text string repeat for the second name. Next I'm going to drag the fields as I did before and place them in my table. If we take a look at the controls we don't see them as an end user will see them. Yes we can change the control properties by clicking control then either clicking properties in the ribbon or right clicking and making our selected choices. However we still cannot see the control as an end user will see the form. We have two choices to see the form as a user will see the form. One, save the form and use InfoPath Filler to open the form. Alternatively, we can use the Home Ribbon Preview Form button. Click this and we see the form as end users views and uses the form. We can test the date picker. We can tab between fields. Essentially, we can learn how a user will interact with the form. It's worth noting if we select the close button to return to the designer then click preview form button again any data or selection we have previously made has been discarded. Preview is just that and no more. Supposing we wanted to test how our form will print we click the file tab to go backstage and click print then print preview. The print preview shows us how the form will print. Note unused table fields won't show. If you decide to print, the standard Windows print options are provided. Our next step is to delete the second date picker. Click the cell holding the date picker control. When selected, right click and select cut. Next, remove the labeled text, you can just backspace. Finally, we need to remove the date field in the fields panel. Click to select the field and right click and choose delete. As we're going to use this template in the next video chapter, our last step is to save the template. Click file and click save as. The same familiar windows save as options are given. Name your form appropriately, for example restaurant audit and save to the drive folder of your choice, essentially where you can find it. You may have a need to ensure your work is backed up, so make sure you select a drive you know as backup configuration. Note, save as type below form name states InfoPath web browser template. This default is the choice we require. Click OK. Thank you for viewing this video. Hopefully you found the subject matter informative. Look forward to seeing you in the next one.
Thank you.